Today I'm going to talk about DaVinci Resolve Color Management. Why I use it, why it is good, how to use it, and why you should use it too. I have a sore throat today, hence the deep voice. I hope you like it. When you launch Resolve, you're in a non-color managed setup by default. This is great if you're shooting in Rec 7 or 9, or just putting in clips from a camera and you don't know what's going on. However, if you're like me and you're using log footage or raw footage, it's best to be in a Resolve Color Management setup. To get DaVinci to manage your colors, you go to DaVinci YRGB DaVinci Managed. Using the automatic setting will work up to an extent. At the end of this video, you'll understand why I prefer not to use this method. Select Custom for Color Processing Mode. Your input color space is your camera log footage whether it's a Canon or a Sony, you should know this. Select that. If you're using multiple cameras, I'll show you a different way to do it. But here, select the one that you use the most. I shoot on a Canon and shoot on Canon Log 3. So that's what I'll select. For timeline color space, I want the widest gamut I can get and that is DaVinci Intermediate. So select that. The timeline working luminance is usually based on the monitor that you're using. Here you can select anything over a thousand. I just set it to maximum 10,000. For your output color space, most people will choose a Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. But depending on where you want to send this, it might be different. Under input DRT, we don't want DaVinci to modify our footage at all. We want log footage to look like Rec. 709. That's it. Select none here. For the output DRT, we want DaVinci to only map the luminance values, so select Luminance Mapping. Now let's take some Canon Log3 footage and put it into our timeline. As you will see, it no longer looks like log footage and looks like a Canon Log3 converted to Rec. 709 based on the profiles inbuilt into DaVinci. This is the difference between non-color managed and resolve color management. Once this is done, your footage comes in looking like Rec. 709 or how you saw it at the back of the camera. Let's head over to the color page. Right click on your clip, select input color space and you can see that this footage is Canon Log3. Suppose you're shooting on different cameras, you can very easily do the same thing. Right click, select input color space and choose the camera or the log footage of that particular camera. You do not need to do this for raw footage as DaVinci interprets raw footage perfectly into Rec. 709 or the selected output color space. Here I'm just switching my footage into the wrong color profile just for fun. Now you can make your adjustments in your primaries and secondaries and export your footage as you like. So why should you do this every time? Well. First of all, you don't need to do it every time. You can save it as a preset. So every time you launch DaVinci, it'll be saved if it's the only camera you're using. But it's extremely important you do this because even the automated version of Resolve color management doesn't work because it applies its own luminance tone mapping when importing the footage and exporting it. That is the input DRT and output DRT. You want the input to be set to none and the output to luminance mapping. You can take a look over here, what that does to our footage after we have color corrected it. Doesn't look great, does it? Anyway, I'll set it back to the way it was or the way it's supposed to be, the proper way of resolve color management. I hope this video helped you and you will use it to make your footage look better, more cinematic and the way it should look. Until next time.